My name's Matt. No, it's not. My name's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about the pair system. So it's something that's just come up because I had to whip it out of the uh, Suzuki. So what is a pair system and how is it meant to work? Well, a pair system, in a sense, is people have said it's an, a, a cheat for emissions. It's not so much of a cheat because if it's a cheat, then the EU won't allow it to go through. Um, engines burn fuel, and burning fuel is just bad. So supposedly it's just bad for the environment because it kicks out stuff that was long buried in the earth and all that kind of shite. And it's global warming, heat terrorising us with UV radiation, uranium explosions, badger melting, fucking toxic, cancer ridden, MSDS sheet giving, fucking whatever. You know, it's just literally killing us all and it's all these bad things, it's giving you face cancer and so on. But, um, there is a problem with this pair system that a lot of people end up removing it. Um, so I just want to go through what it does first and how it then doesn't do it and then what are the benefits of removing it. So, because like I said, this big spiel of how bad that burning stuff in engines is, at the end of the day, the emissions people, the EPA, the Californian Board of Clean Air Association and fuckwits, and the Euro bloody fucking emissions testing, Euro 4.5 and what have you, um, all they're bothered about is what comes out the end of it. They don't care. As long as it comes out clean, they don't give a shit. If there's a way to reduce it, then they're all happy. And they don't really care how you do that, just as long as you fucking don't cheat. <laughs> ah, Volkswagen. And the rest of them, actually. Everyone pins it on Volkswagen and all the rest of it, but the rest of them are just as fucking guilty. It's just that Volkswagen took the brunt of the blame. Because somebody has to... Um, so, you know, basically, how does this system work? Well, one of the killers in um, emissions is hydrocarbons. That really is a fucking arsehole. And the problem is with hydrocarbons is that with bikes especially is it happens on deacceleration. So when you close your throttle, um, in a sense your engine is always one or two or ten or fifty steps behind because you might be going really fast with your RPM. And ten thousand RPM is three thousand three hundred uh, three three hundred and thirty three strokes per second, which is an awful fucking lot. And your engine is basically lagging behind. You've just told it it's then got to sort its life out and tell everything to perform the way it should. And what happens is, is that when you shut your throttle, the throttle closes, but the ECU has only just been told and it's already fired that injector fucking 20 times, 30 times, um, while you were going full throttle. And what happens is, is that now all of a sudden your mixture is extremely rich it goes into your cylinder, your cylinder compresses it, tries to burn it, there's not enough oxygen, so then basically when your exhaust stroke happens, it pushes out a lot of fuel and air into your exhaust. Then what happens is, is your exhaust is really hot. Some of it gargles, so you'll hear a, you'll hear a rumble in the exhaust. But a lot of it ends up going la 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 la, finding a hippie lesbian and fucking strangling them to death because that's what hydrocarbon particles do. And pure hydrocarbons is basically just fucking going like this with petrol in the fucking air. You know what I mean? It's really bad, nasty shit. You wouldn't give a baby a bottle full of petrol. You can get the point. It is actually nasty stuff. So, what Suzuki and other companies decided to do was interrupt every video that I do. Um, what they decided to do was, they're not bothered, um, or no, what they're bothered about is the biggest failure of this, you know, of this um, function of shutting your throttle and your ECU, you know, missing a step and not being, you know, bang on there at the party, a bit late to the party, so to speak, is that it's these hydrocarbons. If you burn them, the products, CO2, water, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, blah, 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 blah aren't as bad as hydrocarbons just basically pissing out fuel. So what they did was is they have a system that when you close off the throttle there will be a vacuum situation because you've just closed your throttle. When that happens what they do is they pump in air into your fresh air from your air box into your exhaust 
and they do it straight into the port, not actually to the exhaust system. The reason why they do it into the exhaust port and not the exhaust itself, because people fit aftermarket exhausts. So if they can pump it straight into the head, then they have, you know, they can assure the European Union and other people like that that they are basically conforming, and this bike will conform for the rest of its days. So what happens is, is you pump fresh air into your exhaust pipe, that will then mix with the fuel that is the fresh fuel that it's hot, it's hot gases, and you are basically input you're putting in oxygen so that fresh fuel can burn. Because then products like I say carbon dioxide, water, all the rest of it, they are not as bad as just pure hydrocarbons, you know, your HCs. So that's what the system is designed to do. Um, it's not cheating, it's literally getting rid of the hydrocarbons, you know what I mean? It, because they are the nasties, and they really are the nasties. You know, I mean, we breathe out carbon dioxide, we don't breathe out petrol. It's a shame. Um, but, uh, what can actually then go wrong with the system? Or well, what can go wrong with the system is this valve, this valve that... Because, <laughs> when you're under full, you know, when you're accelerating like a mad bastard, the exhaust gases will go up that system and into your airbox. It will be like its own exhaust gas recirculation, which will hamper performance because them hot gases will go into your airbox, go into your intake. Your thermal gradient isn't high as high. You know, it suppresses, um, just like exhaust gas recirculation does, it suppresses combustion a bit and all the rest of it. Uh, your engine won't knock, fair enough, but you know what I mean, it, that's what it does. So the valve is a one-way check valve in a sense that's controlled by your ECU and um, sometimes them valves, you know, they just go titty wampus, they just go shit. So what happens now is that your um, it can either remain open or it can stay closed or whatever. If it stays closed you'll never ever fucking know if it breaks that way. If the valve stays open what can happen is you can actually get combustion products when this uh, these escaping hydrocams do ignite in your exhaust, they can actually pop up in your manifold or they can pop up in your airbox. Generally it's in your airbox that you feel it because generally that's where the supply has been fed from. So your airbox will pop underneath your tank and scare the living shit out of you. Or when you, you know when you close the throttle. Um, but yeah, this system is designed basically, and people think it's there to water down your emissions. Well, no, because you can only fit so much in a pipe, and if you add extra oxygen, the testers do not say, um, you know, how many parts, they work out parts per million, they do not say, oh, out of the percentage of the entire exhaust emissions, 50% of it was fresh air, because that'd be some, there'd be something seriously fucking wrong with that, you know, that's not going to happen that way. Um, there are free oxygen and all those that you can't, but yes, you know, they don't test it that way, they actually test how many parts per million, and if you just add some fresh air, that is not going to help the fact that your exhaust is still producing 300 parts per million carbon dioxide, or whatever, you know, whatever the pass or failure ratings are. Um, you know, it's not displacing, well, we'll put fresh air in so we'll get rid of some exhaust gases by evaporating them into nothing. It's nothing like that. Now, um, the pair system, the one that's for the Suzuki and a lot of other bikes, you know, the GSXR has a similar system and all the rest of it, um, they are 100% purely just emissions rating. You can remove them if they are faulty. I'm not going to start to say everyone start removing them. You know, they do work and they do work quite well. Um, for the emission side of things, it's got nothing to do with performance. Um, you are not going to get more power by removing it. You are not going to do anything stupid like that. Just if there's a problem and it's popping in your, your airbox, it's popping under your tank, or you've got a horrible backfiring scenario, which is what I had on the SV1000, it'll just pop every time you close the throttle, bang, 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 proper backfiring. You know what I mean? Proper, proper backfiring. Again, generally because my valves need cleaning and my fucking tappets and uh, the throttle bodies needed cleaning and there was loads of other reasons why everything needed cleaning and sorting out and the reason why it was banging like a bastard. But uh, yeah, blocking that. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll literally, I'm going to, I haven't removed it, I basically just bypassed it. Um, but what I will do is because it was such an easy bypass and because the whole system still fitted, um, I will reconnect it and record a video while I'm out riding. You can hear the backfiring. Then we'll just basically bypass it, and then you can hear the difference. And you can see the, you know, you can see the difference and hear the difference of how it was backfiring like a knobhead, and now it's not. 
Um, what does that mean for the exhaust? It's probably still, it's probably now just spewing out shitloads of hydrocarbons compared to what it was doing before when you close the throttle. At least it's not banging. You know what I mean? Fuck the pandas. Um, one of the other things I must say as well is if you do remove the, the actual, if you do actually disc, um, not disconnect, if yeah, if you do disconnect and remove the entire um, PAR system, what can happen is, is you can get a fuel injection fault because it knows that it's not connected. Uh, you could do some stupid bypass or something, just fucking keep it plugged in. You know, just don't have the actual pipe work connected. I hope that makes sense. We'll do some more on this. We'll actually show you, like I said, I'll show you the demo of how much it was backfiring like a dickhead. Um, we'll actually have a look and see actually what's wrong with this valve as well. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.